Hello athletes, this is Travis back with another training video for you guys and this one I'm going to break the mold a little bit. I'm going to kind of be doing a little bit of cross exposure here between my personal channel uh, that goes under my name, Travis Gardner, the one you guys are watching, the one that uh, most of you guys are subscribed to. If you're not subscribed to, click the button, uh, subscribe. Uh, but uh, that other channel that I do is Rowing Resource and Rowing Resource is a very focused kind of coaching education channel. Um, uh, but I had a great conversation uh, this past week with Bruce Smith, the founder and CEO of Hydro. Hydro is the company that produces the uh, rowing machines with the live outdoor rowing experience, similar to the Peloton bike um, and so uh, we covered a lot of different uh, topics in that conversation uh, we talked about coaching selection and development we talked about program development we talked about uh, inclusion uh, in the sport and kind of the work that Bruce is doing at Hydro to kind of bring in new populations to the sport but we also did talk about kind of the dominant paradigm of, of training and uh, training methodology and those particular aspects I thought were relevant to this population, the population that uh, watches and is subscribed uh, to my channel here. Um, and so I wanted to kind of pull that out of this broader conversation and share it here in this video with you. If you are interested in listening to that full conversation with Bruce, I'll kind of link it up here below so you guys can click on and check on that. Uh, and you can also listen to it just as a podcast in your car or whatnot, just by going onto iTunes and finding Rowan Resource uh, through there. But uh, I did think that these parts of the conversation were particularly relevant to this audience, so I wanted to share it with you. So um, let's go ahead and cut to that. I uh, hope I'm right. I hope this helps you uh, get a little bit insight into it's kind of the sport and the potential of where this sport can go and what uh, the things are that are dominant sport and what are holding the sport back um, currently. So that's it. Uh, let's cut and I uh, hope you enjoy. Bye. You know, and especially I hear so many, and this drives me crazy because I don't agree with it, but I, I hear so many elite coaches these days talk about how kind of the, the formula has been figured out for training and kind of there's there's you know all these elite level athletes they're all within a fraction of percent of each other and that the real frontier is psychology which i don't discount um the that psychology is 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 critical but the idea that things have been figured out is, is insane to me I, I don't think that's anywhere anywhere close to that no point. no and i i had this so i was so humbled uh i was just a complete idiot i you know i had lunch with this guy who's a u.s swim team coach mm -hmm. uh his name is Kyle Shack. He coaches at Yale. He's just a really good guy. The definition of open hand, like he'll help anybody, like whether you know him or not, cold call, whatever. So we were talking and I was, um, he had been at the Olympics in 2016 in Rio and I was bragging about all the lactic testing that I was doing and about the loads that I was able to put on my athletes and how I managed them. He was like, oh dude, you're so behind. Like you're just so behind. And he opened this door into thinking about mitochondrial pathways and uh, really low volume, very specific intensity training. And uh, it's not like just completely off of the periodized thing and how uh, swimming and track have really uh, pushed the frontiers of what's possible, especially like Katie Ledecky and Michael Phelps have really, you know, they just changed what's possible. And rowing has to get there and it, it's, uh, it's a radically different approach and it's, probably better but in the rowing world you know everybody rows on pockers everybody rows the same blades and they're not willing to do those radical tests because it's people's lives they're play, playing with but the ultimate training methodology we're we're definitely going to break through on that and you know that 521 in the men's eight or 519 world record like that's that's going to fall it's going to yeah. be a five record you know it's, yeah. and i hope uh i hope we have a hand to play in that um because it is, it's just, uh, it's the willingness to go out there and experiment and be crazy and try new things. Because um, I, I totally agree. It's not, it has not figured out yet. Yeah. And when I was talking to Justin Moore, your chief coach, you know, he had mentioned that something that you had done with them is really making the point to get them to other sports and high performance contacts within those other sports so they could get that perspective. And that just, uh, that just really rang true with me. And I really respected that kind of decision on your part, because I do, from the simplest perspective, I think that there's so much to learn from other sports because a sport that has billions of dollars in marketing income and, or, and you know, product revenue is going to put a lot more money into research and development, you know, and learning this stuff and rowing just doesn't have that, you know? And okay. so, you know, from a pure, pure logistical point, there's just exponentially more logistics to learn and understand how to train athletes 
in other sports than there is in rowing. And I think for me, the, the foundation of my understanding of rowing uh, comes from uh, from running, you know, comes from Arthur Lydiard, you know, and those methodologies. Yep. And, and certainly I've built on that foundation and figured out how to adapt it to rowing. But um, I, I remember early on when I was picking up and I was teaching myself training methodology because I came from a college club. So there was no kind of professional expertise there. Um, just reading the rowing books and being like, this stuff doesn't jive with me. There's, there's no, it's actually well, it's very bad <laughs> information. Science, and Yeah, no, no, science is uh, almost all the studies are done with like a tiny sample over a longitudinal period of between six and 12 weeks, which is just not, it's just not good science. And uh, it's a beginning, but it's, you know, the run out of phys ed departments with no, there's no upside or downside to getting it right. You know, like, it's just not relevant. It's a, it's a study that you publish and you get your credit for publishing. But after that, you know, the, the rubber hits the road out in the water and there's so many other variables at, at, at play. I was, I coached uh, Loyola Academy in Chicago for uh, six years. And uh, one year on Mondays, we took single strokes, stroke as hard as you could. And we measured how far you could make a four go. Okay. And then Tuesdays we did 10 strokes. Wednesdays we did 40 strokes, Thursdays we did like 15 minutes, and Fridays we did sprints, and Saturday was race day. And I did that for the whole season. <laughs> I was, and I was like, no, that's, I mean, we just, uh, but actually in retrospect, like it kind of fits in a little bit with this mitochondrial pathway development piece. Mm. Uh, it's kind of, but I can't believe these poor guinea pigs, he's, uh, uh, one of them called me the other day out of the blue, and, and I was grateful that he would still talk to me because I was just such a crazy <laughs> yeah the things we put them through yeah i mean i looked at that and the things you know i did early on and uh i was like yeah and so uh, it's interesting and, and that's and that's i mean the athletes it's unfortunate too that that our our coaches the way it's set up our coaches really have to kind of learn you know through that experimentation because we we just we really need to get a better coaching education system and pathway and the sport yeah. you know and i think that they're just that's i mean that's what's available and i mean that's how most of us learn and you know fortunately you know hope it's the it's the ones of us with humility that realize how wrong we are and how little we don't know that are actually going to excel and get better in that but there's so many people that think they got it right yeah, well, I, and they know. do get it right for a few years. And then, you know, there are a few luminaries out there who really do have it figured out and yeah. understand. Me. You know, like coach, it, I think one of the biggest challenges is the people who are really passionate about rowing tend to have this high performance bent. And mm -hmm. like, if you're not rowing five or six times a week, they don't really want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So you end up with a coaching population that is really committed to people who are committed like they are. And yeah you need to find passionate coaches who are happy to coach somebody once a week and take them seriously. Mm -hmm. Even if that means that they're not going to win any big races, because that's where the sport is going to grow. Like getting those edges to be softer and more inclusive is just, it's really critical if we're going to survive and, and actually provide the United States with a pathway to, a, you know, theoretically at least slightly happier and healthier population. Yeah, and that, that's interesting. And that kind of leverages into kind of the com the experience that I've had, you know, over the last decade or so, because I, I mean, I've been everywhere, you know, had cancer back in 2011 and recovered from that. You know, I've got to where I was 204 pounds, and then now I'm back to my racing weight. You know, I've been where I, you know, row once a month, you know, I've, you know, run. And it's, so I've, I've gone through all this experience and what, and I always like to experiment on myself with my training understanding. And that's given me a chance to kind of be able to constantly approach training from all kinds of different perspectives. You know, it's like, I know what it's like to be overweight in training. I know what it's like to be sick in training. I know what it's like to be yeah. co coming from, you know, completely lost fitness back to training. And I think that, you know, a kind of, um, you know, a, a hurdle coaches, I want to call it, you know, a deficiency, but I call it a hurdle that coaches, you know, we all kind of reflect our own experience in that coaching, you know, and as you're saying, you know, the people that get into coaching are the people who are very committed and they want to, you know, take that commit, commitment and leverage it out. But I think if coaches can, you know, can, like you said, not only be okay and excited about coaching these people who are training, you know, once a week or twice a week or have very different goals and performance goals, but can also get out of the mindset of like, you really got to go back to the drawing board in terms of how you teach and how you train those athletes, you know, and that, you know, I think that, and this is a big problem with you know, with understanding of methodology in the sport and something I've been trying to kind of counter and kind of my own material I've been putting out is that so much of understanding a row and methodology is simply derivative of elite principles. 
Yeah. And, and you can't just dilute the elite principles and apply it to Joe Schmo, who's picking up their first hydro at 50 years old. Um, exactly. It just, it doesn't transfer. You really got to start from scratch. You got to have, have a completely different approach. And I think that that's what our sport is lacking, even the coaching education. It's like, well, it's all, well, these are what the elite rowers do. So just like water down the volume and, you know, switch the intensity around and do this yeah. instead. It's not, well, you got to take a completely different approach. I mean, you've, you've got to address this athletes, you know, mobility and flexibility and, you know, and, and their overall health while you're also kind of developing this foundation. And, um, and I was actually doing a consult this morning. I was talking to the athlete and he had asked about like the concept two workouts that they put out. And I was like, those are, it's garbage. I think because, you know, it's all about what's, exciting it's all intervals do this interval do that interval you know go high in rate and i'm like you know you've got to develop this foundation and i think people are too eager to kind of get into that point and it's 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 interesting all about the hit training travis it's yeah. all about the hit training yeah. i mean yeah. you know <laughs> movement is good like any kind of movement is great like mm -hmm. if, if there's something out there that floats your boat like absolutely that's great i think uh to your point about rowing being uh being able to thrive and actually serve a lot of people, you really just got to meet them where they are. And it's not, it's not rocket science. It's like every, every great consumer company, every great retail company, like the, the, uh, the gap that you uh, expose for people can't be too big to jump across, you know? So. All right. And so that was the, the final part of that conversation. Again, check the description down below um, if you want to listen to that whole conversation with Bruce. But as kind of Bruce just left off and his goal of kind of bridging that gap and kind of bringing the experience to the athlete in their own room with hydro. Um, that kind of rings true with me because that is essentially what I'm doing here with you guys. I'm really trying to kind of bring this information to you and make it as accessible as possible through these videos for those that are really interested in kind of learning and understanding what they want to be doing with the training and why they should be doing it. Um, so that's it. That's the theme there. Um, for those that are interested in maybe picking up a hydro, I'll put a link down below that'll be kind of like my own little referral link. So if you click on that link and end up buying a hydro, um, I'll get uh, a nice little benefit from that, uh, that sale. And that'll be a good way to kind of support this channel and what I'm doing here with you guys. And, uh, you know, for those that don't know, if you do click on those Amazon links uh, in the description and buy something, whether it's even the thing in the link or even anything on Amazon within 24 hours, I actually get a little bit of referral uh, commission there. So that's another good way to kind of support what I'm doing with the channel and then kind of the clearest way is just to hop on over to the Patreon, which I actually have set up through Rowan Resource. So go to patreon.com slash Rowan Resource and you can kind of uh, sign on, give a couple bucks a month, uh, whatever the cost of coffee is, however much you want uh, to kind of help support the work that I'm doing here. Because the more I get uh, in terms of income through those channels, the more I can focus my time on kind of these education projects and less on kind of the other things that actually kind of pay the bills. Um, so, but that's it. Um, those ways that you can support the channel, you can definitely always support it by just sharing sharing this uh, with the community and kind of getting the message out to as many people as possible. I always appreciate that. So like, subscribe, comment down below if you got questions, insights, your own perspective on the dominant paradigms of rowing, what rowing as a sport can do to kind of move itself forward into the future. Um, those comments are always appreciated. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. And this is Travis signing off. Until next time. Bye.